If you thought about harvesting oats, you'd probably visualize the large farming operations in the wide open spaces somewhere in the heartland. But we have a different kind of oat story to share with you. It's a different crop with a different use. If we didn't have these dunes with current sea level rise, we wouldn't have beaches. Steve Mercer considers himself more than a farmer and a grower. He sees his role as important to saving a significant element in North Carolina's ecosystem. And that ecosystem traps sand to build dunes. Those dunes protect not only property, but other ecosystems. On this early May morning, Steve and his employees are planting sea oats. Critical to protecting North Carolina's shoreline, sea oats are tall grasses whose seed-topped plumes capture grains of sand driven by Atlantic Ocean winds. It was high winds that moved Steve into the sea oats business when the greenhouses for his bedding plant nursery were demolished by hurricanes. But these ill winds blew some good Steve was contacted by the late David Nash, a North Carolina extension agent. He suggested that Steve change crops. Sea oats are well suited to saltwater environments. Their long root structure can stabilize loose soil and sand. With the damage these hurricanes are doing, he said, I think you can uh, grow a crop, grow sea oats as a crop and, and sell that crop. He said, I think there's gonna be a need. When I first moved here, there were folks, uh, there were houses so close to the ocean that people could fish off the, the decks. People would rent the houses just so they could fish off the decks. Harry Simmons is the mayor of Caswell Beach, North Carolina. Thousands of sea oat plants from Steve's nursery have helped reclaim and maintain acres of oceanfront property. In fact, there's a stairway right over there. You used to have stairs, and now you have these gorgeous dunes with the sea oats. Right. We had and six, five or six steps there, and now we've, it's all covered up with these, uh, this sand that has been basically held here by these sea oats, attracted here, if you will, by these sea oats. The sea oats help trap the sand as it starts to blow, and it's a, it's a great thing for maintaining a, a strong beach. Sarah, this is one of our production greenhouses for sea oats. Steve says that research by David Nash showed that native grasses fared better in the North Carolina sand than sea oats brought in from other states. Those variables prompted Steve to begin growing his own seedlings. Using successful techniques from his earlier bedding plant business, the sea oats get their start, where else? In water. The method we use is hydroponics. We sow the seed in a styrofoam tray, float the tray in water, plants get their nutrients from the water. We put just enough soil in there to, um, to, to hold the seed in place. And this is what you're looking for when you pull these sea, these, uh, sea oats out and you're getting ready to transplant them. You want a really nice root ball at the base. We do. When uh, these plants first go on the beach, they're going to put all their energy into putting a root down into the water table. So we want to give them a head start on that, and that's one of the things that we've worked on hard here at our greenhouses is to try to get a real healthy root ball, uh, a dense mass of roots on the bottom of the plant so that when they hit the hole, they're, they're ready to grow. The young sea oat plants take about a year to reach full maturity, eventually eliminating the need for the sand fencing, which currently protects them. Steve, how long ago did you plant these sea oats? We planted these about four years ago. When we planted them, this beach was flat. So from, from the tide line back to underneath the steps was a flat sand beach. And we, we positioned these sea oats specifically to do what they've done, trap the sand right in front of these steps. But the main thing we wanted was to start establishing a new dune line in front of this structure in order to protect the structure, protect the dune that was already here from a, from a storm and ultimately protect the infrastructure that's behind that, whether that be houses, roads, in this case, a lighthouse. Well, I'm actually wondering about taking that walkway and bringing it down a little further. As for Mayor Simmons, he says Steve's work has helped 
to protect barrier island and shoreline ecologies. That's improved property values while helping to save North Carolina's beaches. It's a great benefit for uh, not only the people who live here, but also the people who visit here. The town is owned by people from 28 different states around the country. It's, um, it's hardly a local issue when you start talking about coastal property because it's a, it's a national treasure.